Welcome to this session on communication in disaster situations. Communication in disaster situations is potentially a big challenge to responders. Communication itself is a process in which messages are passed from a sender to a receiver with constant feedback. Communication is very important in disaster situations. It is important for coordination of the response, for reduction of risk through risk communication, and for prevention of panic. Before we proceed, it is important that you read story two, that is communication failure. What is the moral of this story? How to communicate better in disaster situations? It is important to follow the incident command hierarchy. In disasters, the press is always looking for information, and papers sell when adverse events are quoted. Only the incident command officer or his appointee, and that is the officer in charge of communications, should be allowed to give press releases. The communications officer should search for facts and be ready with evidence. These are the do's in disaster communication. Establish pre-planned press releases where all media houses are informed in advance and invited. Questions should be allowed to clarify events. The incident command officer should be brief to the point and where there is information lacking that should be admitted. The incident command system officer consults the relevant section heads before the meeting with the press and should allow the presence of other section heads to clarify issues in case clarification is necessary. Do not tell lies. It is better to say you don't know and you will investigate the issue than to tell a lie. There should be a public relations desk or information desk with a list of victims and up-to-date information if possible. Such a desk is managed by public relations personnel, counselors, etc. There should be constant consultation with the incident command system, search and rescue, pre-hospital care teams, hospital teams, and field teams to get the latest information. Let us consider scenario 1, post-election violence in country X. Country X experienced one of the worst complex emergencies since independence. During a commission established to find the effects, the police force put the number dead at 1,100. The permanent secretary for health put them at 1,102. And the international organizations put them at 1,500. The press concluded all were confused. Question. What is your verdict and where do you think things went wrong in the communication chain? What information is needed for communication in a disaster situation? You need to know the site of the disaster, the type of the disaster, the time of the disaster and the time information was received, the number of casualties and their flow or progress, any visiting VIPs or other important officials, the relevant online ministry and what has been done so far, the assistance required and any important appeals for blood and other logistics, the response efforts at the time, 
and their successes and limitations. These are five communication failures that kill operational success. Mixed messages from multiple experts. Information released late. Paternalistic attitudes, especially towards the affected communities. Not countering rumors and myths in real time. The grapevine. Public power struggles and confusion, especially between intervening agencies. Let us look at scenario two, a flood. A recent, in a recent flooding in one of the countries, a pressman asked how many people were in need of blankets. The medical officer of health answered, none. Later, it was found that all the 3,000 flood victims needed non-food items like blankets. Whose responsibility was it to provide the right information? These are five communication steps that boost operational success. Execute a solid communication plan. Be the first source of information before other alternative sources get it. Express empathy early. Show competence and expertise. Show that you are in charge of the situation. Remain honest and open. Thank you for listening.